Just two days ago we had reached Genoa, Italy, but now we will disembark onto Sicily, an island that most people associate with, well, you know, right? Anyhow, 800 kilometers in a day, that's literally light speed. Solid ground on our bicycle is great. We feel excited, but also a little anxious. Join us as we continue our journey to the east and around the world. There will be cycling, obviously, history, as in old stuff, our first little cultural shock, the mafia, problems, a change of plans, more very old stuff, new friends and our best camp spot so far. Sicily is located in the Mediterranean Sea, just a few kilometers southwest of the tip of the Italian peninsula. Higher temperatures and the prospect of better weather led us here. But first off, Palermo. It's already evening when we arrive, so we check into the cheapest room on the island. Finding a spot for our tent in the darkness is hard and we do not feel confident to camp in a big city. The city has had an eventful 2750 years so far and it shows on every corner. Today, Palermo is the political, economic and cultural center of the entire island. It's buzzing with life and to prepare for the coming days, we head to a street market. So he was weighing the stuff and then the bananas and the eggplants, egg uh, they were 2 euros and then I put 2 bell pepper, 1 white onion and 1 orange and he said now it's 6. So this uh, felt way too steep uh, increase in price because he, he was just adding one euro for everything, basically. So he told another guy to, to do the payment, and he said six, and it's too much, and he said, okay, five. So I'll pay five. Unfortunately, after our highly successful grocery shopping, we end up in a fight. So if you ever happen to visit this stunning city, make sure to send us some eye-watering pictures. Thanks. Morning. Buongiorno. We're leaving Palermo. Uh, we stayed uh, in the cheapest available place on the whole island, which is behind us. Uh, the room was, what was this? 22 euros together per night. We're going now towards the east, following the north coast. Despite the numerous little problems we've had, on our bicycles is where we feel most comfortable. We know we are getting somewhere, slowly but surely, one pedal stroke at a time. For what it's worth, by now we've cycled a total of 2500 kilometers. After a little breakfast, we hit the road again. 
wow, wow, wow. It is beautiful, everything. Also ugly at the same time. To get anywhere by bike, you take in every meter. We love that and it is one of the central reasons why we cycle around the world. But if the in-between is not a postcard picture, skipping it is not so easy. Unbelievable, look at this, I mean, it's number one beachfront property, but nothing. People do not invest here. Not even three kilometers from the city center of Palermo, right behind these houses, you see in my back, is the beach. Honestly, for me, it feels like, it, it feels a little bit like being in a developing country, like really, really, really different place. This island has been riddled by crime and uh, corruption for at least 200 years and it really shows, it's insane, it's mind-boggling, I don't know what to say. Perfect beachfront property, state of disrepair again, here on our left, this was a restaurant or something maybe. Perfect location, amazing location. Look, it burned. So, I mean, put two and two together. Why did it burn? Oh my God. Okay, I hope I did not put some glass in my tire now. Um, oh. We regularly rake our brains over how to deal with negative aspects of our journey, like this one. In the end, however, we went to see the world with open eyes, unvarnished. We are privileged to do this and we take it as our duty to show it as we see it. In no way we want to discourage anyone from doing it or seeing it themselves. As long as we don't explicitly say, don't come here, come, but come with realistic expectations. So yes, apparently the Mafia is still a problem in Sicily. We just get to see one tiny fraction of their billion dollar business model. Through violence and intimidation monopolies are established in the waste management sector and that waste is subsequently disposed of illegally. I mean, I read about this, but I really thought it was not as bad anymore. I'm not judging, because obviously there's, uh, there's structural problems of not properly functioning institutions for literally centuries here. Centuries where you cannot trust to go to the police, where you cannot trust a judge or court that right is spoken properly, like law. Anyhow, we want to follow the north coast of Sicily to the east to reach Etna, one of the world's most active stratovolcanoes. Pretty blue. It's Christmas soon and we are trying to arrange something special. So we've stopped here because we are trying to steal some oranges. Okay, let's go. Mafia, we Because it is getting dark, you can tell that it's late in the day and uh, we've been doing about 55 kilometers so far out of Palermo. And I have to redact my statement I made at the Côte d'Azur when I said I have never seen so many fences and walls and stuff because uh, yeah, basically since we left Palermo there's uh, not really there has no there's been no place where we could put our tent yeah this will be interesting uh, it's not perfect it's good generally good no one will come here for sure we have flat even surface so we are really really hungry we're trying to cook and our stove failed on us the fuel pump we have this uh, multi-fuel cooker and use it with gasoline uh, last time it worked as intended and now the fuel tank is half full we can pump nothing happens i will try to figure out what's what's going on but uh, now it started raining as well so cold dinner for us it could be worse. I mean, the coast is super ugly, the last 60 kilometers. Heavy industry, refineries, um, bad smells, oil on the ground, uh, terrible actually. A big road with heavy traffic and no coca. But look, I mean, we are sitting in the dry tent and having a 
very good salads, very, very healthy. Uh, not so healthy breads. Um, apparently in Italy it's hard to get healthy whole grain, whole wheat breads. Also, um, gorgonzola, blue cheese, come on. Mm. You wouldn't think, but uh, it's going to rain really, really bad. Um, This is why, after a lot of thinking, like hours, hours of thinking and weighing options, next time we, we throw a coin. So we'll go back a little bit. Uh, the great, great uh, big street we went yesterday to get to a train station where we can uh, take a train to the south of Sicily, uh, to Agrigento. Uh, which is supposed to be a very nice city. Also, the weather in the south is supposed to be better. So we'll then continue on the southern coast and yeah, see beautiful parts of Sicily too without freezing and being wet all the time. Yeah, uh, which is a problem, or which would be a problem because our fuel stove is not going to work anytime soon, I guess. Try to contact uh, the company MSR, but I don't think uh, that we will get it to work without new parts, um, and that will take some time. Have you ever asked yourself how radically different your life could be today if you had made an utterly trivial decision differently at a certain point? We have to make decisions under uncertainty all the time, but even more so since we are on the road. Maybe the weather forecast is wrong, maybe we can get the stove to work. Maybe it would actually be great in the north of Sicily and the south will be a disappointment. It's kind of absurd. We have the freedom to choose another direction with every crossroad, but it costs us so much energy to make a simple decision. We need a healthier way. Learn to go with the flow, as they say. <laughs> Every Italian city so far. This one is also very hilly with lots of stairs, which is good because when we don't cycle one day, <laughs> then we can still train our legs. Today we explore Agrigento, but first a few words about the turbulent past of this island. To this date, many residents first and foremost identify as Sicilians and much less Italians which is easy to understand looking at the history. The oldest evidence of human activity on this island dates back a staggering 14,000 years. By around 750 BC, Sicily had three Phoenician and a dozen Greek colonies. Agrigento, or Akragas, as it was called by the Greeks, was one of the leading cities of Magna Graecia during the Golden Age of Ancient Greece. The modern-day city is quite nice, but is outshined by the ancient part. After the fall of the Roman Empire in the 5th century AD, Sicily was then ruled by the Vandals, the Ostrogoths, the Byzantine Empire and the Emirate of Sicily. The Norman conquest led to the creation of the County of Sicily in 1071, succeeded by the Kingdom of Sicily which lasted almost 700 years. Under the Spanish branch of the House of Bourbon, not the liquor, you know that huge French dynasty, it was then unified with the Kingdom of Naples as the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies. It only became a part of the Kingdom of Italy in 1860. Since then it's probably mostly governed by the Mafia. Or in short, Sicily has a rich and unique culture. The Valle dei Templi is a UNESCO World Heritage Site for resembling one of the most outstanding examples of ancient Greek art and architecture. Behind me you see the Temple of Juno, Actually, it's not the Temple of Juno. Apparently, there was a erroneous uh, translation from some Latin uh, text. Anyhow, this is built in Doric style. You can see the front here. It used to have six columns in the front and then 13 columns on the sides. Uh, pretty big, 2,500 years ago. And we are now standing next to the southern 
city wall, like the fortifications um, of the city, also built by the Greeks, um, because they were in war with the, the Carthaginians 50 years after they started building this stuff here. Seeing this in full swing, Plato is said to have remarked that they build like they intend to live forever, yet eat like this is their last day. It includes the remains of seven temples, most of them being built in the 5th century BC. Ancient sources considered Akragas to be a very large city, claiming a population in the hundreds of thousands. I am always amazed by human achievements of epic proportions like this. In all fairness though, it seems like most of the temples and city walls have been built by slaves obtained after winning a war against ancient Carthage. Be it as it may, that still shows that there is no problem too big if you just throw enough human lives and suffering at it. But enough with the old stuff. The next morning brings brilliant cycling weather and even better news. Hola, hola. Say hello to Carmen, Chema and their dog Trufa. They followed us from Genoa to the island and they convinced even another cyclist, Ivan, to do the same. Oh god, I'm being followed! Help! <laughs> After a quick meetup, we dropped them off at the Valle dei Templi and head to the next iconic attraction, the Scala dei Turci, which means Stair of the Turks in Italian. We are at the Scala dei Turci. It is a limestone rock formation in the shape of a staircase. The latter part of the name derives from the frequent piracy raids by the Saracens during the Middle Ages and Ottoman pirates, or Turks so to say, during the early modern period. It is said that the pirates used this spot as a landing and boarding place, hence the name. Uh, and now we try to find a place where we can later this night camp with all of the guys and girls and dogs. Carmen tasked us with finding a camp spot at this iconic beach, which seems a little far-fetched, but lo and behold... We ran into this uh, nice, very friendly old man. Uh, he speaks, I don't know, like five words German. Uh, but not like really, but uh, we were able to make him understand that we need to camp somewhere for the night and we're not really sure what he meant, just that we shall go to the next little uh, village, uh, Lido Rossi or something like that and he said this is no problem to camp there one, two, three nights uh, we are not sure if he meant just on the beach, like anywhere, or if we can stay on his property or something. So, uh, well, he said, let's go, just go straight, Lido Rossi, and he went with a car. So maybe he's waiting there somewhere for us, hopefully. <laughs> a special thanks to Guy Ritka, our newest Buy Me A Coffee member in the One More Day tier. Supporting us via buymeacoffee.com is great. We love creating these videos and sharing our story with you. But as you might imagine, it is a lot of work and costs a lot of money. So if you are able to chip in, it will enable us to do this much longer. <gasps> Thank you! And back to the story. So we did find him. It's, he's in this car. <laughs> ah, this is amazing. Oh, that's fantastic. Yoohoo! It's great. <laughs> Okay, we follow him. Giuseppe. Giuseppe. Ah, oh, very Giuseppe. nice to meet you, Giuseppe. <laughs> so, yeah. Grazie mille. Prendete le bici. Yes. Prendete le bici. Go. Yes. 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 Yes.
Panorama. Sí. Ciao ragazzi, ragazzi! Ciao, 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 After a bumpy start, our first week in Sicily turned out to be the best one so far. We have been on the road for 45 days now, and it is here at the Scala dei Turci where we get our first glimpse of the lightness of being. We and our new friends spontaneously stayed another night, enjoying the breathtaking location. Giuseppe, a true Sicilian, visits us again with his home and wine and steaming espresso. He seems to be happy to have us around and we truly could not wish for anything more. But you, you can have more, more of our stories if you click right here. In the next episode we are going to explore the rest of the island together with our new friends, the sun in our hearts and in our faces. Thank you so much for your support, your likes and thoughts and your contributions at buymeacoffee.com. It makes a big difference and helps us a lot to create these videos. Until next time, and may the wind be in your back. <laughs>